because I'm sure for some people this sounds a bit esoteric. I don't know what you're talking about, you know, but I can tell you who is paying very careful attention to this. And it's every lobbyist from the big pharmaceutical companies, every lobbyist from Kellogg's and Pepsi Cola and Coca-Cola and Kraft Heinz and Mondelez, they're paying careful attention. And I'll bet you they're taking all the right people out to dinner. And, it, and it's not a, a vegan dinner, folks. It's, it's steak and lobster. That's what they're taking them out to eat, even though steak and lobster is very bad for your health. That's what all of the people who have a vote on this are, are being taken out. Tell me, uh, in the last few months, how active have you been getting feedback from your people inside this administration? How active are these lobbyists for big food and big pharma? Because they know that this is a potential outcome that either we've got this caveat or maybe the entire guidelines say, hey, you should stop eating three servings of ultra processed flour a day, which is, is currently acceptable by the current guidelines. Are you are you hearing of a lot of lobbyists really kicking back against this? Yeah, I you know, I can tell you that these the lobbyists, the polite term for them is stakeholders and stakeholders, the, the need to satisfy stakeholders is a real concern of top administration officials. Probably the loudest uh, group that I've heard about are the soy and and wheat uh, and corn farmers who uh, who are threatened by a potential option that is lower in the very foods that they grow. Uh, so, but I'm sure the ultra processed food manufacturers are in there because one of the discoveries when we looked at the conflicts of interest on the expert committee in 2020, some of the most common names there, the most common ties were the ultra processed food manufacturers like Nestle, like Unilever, like Danon, um, Kellogg's, General Mills, those companies come up again and again and again as being involved in virtually every process um, in nutrition policy in Washington, D.C. I want to yeah. give your your audience a little bit of a, um, a an understanding of how hostile the D.C. policy world is to low carbohydrate and specifically the U.S. Department of Agriculture, which is where this the so-called science is done for the dietary guidelines because low carbohydrate science has been showing disease reversal in clinical trials since the late 1990s. So yeah, you know, and there's let me just jump in and say low carb diet and ketogenic diets are the most researched diets when it comes to chronic metabolic disease like diabetes and obesity and, and other metabolic syndromes, there's no other diet that's been researched more in real meaningful trials. And currently right now, if you go uh, to the clinical data, the, the clinical trials website, there's over 400 studies ongoing right now about either low carb or ketogenic options, but yet they act like there's no research on this. And so that's, that's the thing that's just mystifying is yeah. the research is very clear about low carb and keto, but yet you're seeing that that that's getting a lot of kickback. Yeah. Well, so yeah, I mean, the amount of research is really right up there with, say, the Mediterranean diet, which everybody knows and has been endorsed. So let me give you a little bit and just uh, open the you know pull back the curtain on what's been happening yeah. in DC yeah. on low carb. I did. I filed some um, what's called Freedom of Information Act request to get emails from the 2015 dietary guideline process, I found that they did a secret review of low carb diets. They, a, a systematic review, it came out that the overwhelming number of studies in that review showed that low carb outperformed low fat for uh, losing weight. And there was one member of the expert committee uh, from Harvard who said, uh, this is an important review. We need to talk about low carb. People will accuse us of of not paying attention to this data. It's very powerful. There's so much of it. This is 2015. The USDA officials in charge of the process decided to bury that evidence and not include it in the report. And this Harvard professor pipes up and says, I don't think we should be burying 
this data, literally using that word. Um, so there, so there was a review, it was buried in 2015. In the next cycle of the guidelines, 2020, they, in part because my organization got so many thousands of people to write comments, we had tens of thousands of people writing comments saying, we want a review of low carbohydrate diets. It was the most commented upon topic of any in the public comment period. They did a review on low carbohydrate diets. They could not find a single study on low carb in 2020, they, uh, which was incredible. I mean, they did not find even a study that whose first author was a member of the expert committee itself. They somehow set the inclusion exclusion criteria in a way that just, uh, that blinded them to all of the literature on low carbohydrate diets, which at that point, probably there were over a thousand studies on low carbohydrate mm -hmm. diets. Mm -hmm. In this Biden administration committee, they, um, they didn't review the clinical trial literature. What they did is they did some computer modeling on low carbohydrate diets in which they took out uh, all of the carbohydrates out of a diet in a computer model. Okay, this is a very low quality evidence. Like when you have actual clinical trials on humans, why are you doing computer modeling? They took out all the calories and carbohydrates and then didn't replace them with anything. So now you have a, a, a diet you're looking at, which is like calorically only 50% of what it should be normally. And then they said, well, this is a nutritionally deficient diet and it doesn't have enough energy in it because they didn't replace the carbohydrates with anything else. So well, that's these obviously are like literally shenanigans. You're starving to death. Go ahead. I said that's obviously not sustainable because you'd be starving. So this is, I just want everybody to really grasp the amount of foolishness that's been going on over the U S dietary guidelines for the last few decades. They literally did a secret review of the low carb ketogenic research and said, oh yeah, this, this actually helps better than any other dietary option to help people lose weight. And then they buried it. So there's only two reasons you would, that you're working. You're either working to improve people's health, some, everybody's health, or you're working to improve certain people's profit. Please tell me in the comments, do you think the, the, the members of the Dietary Guideline Committee, were they working for health or for profit? Everybody watching, tell me in the comments. I want to see what your gut feeling about this is. Go ahead, Nina. I'm sorry. It just it makes me furious to know that people in positions of authority had the evidence right in front of them, but yet I guess the paychecks that they get, the stock dividends, whatever, I don't know, but something is more important to them than the health of every American. I, I, that doesn't compute with my brain, but I'm obviously with some people's brain, that, that works out just fine for them in their comfy life. Well, and to be you know generous, there's also just a huge amount of bias, cognitive bias against this diet that in the mainstream medical and nutrition community, mm -hmm. people have come to believe it's dangerous, unsustainable. It has, um, they, they just have so much bias going back decades, right? When, when Robert Atkins came out with his book, uh, his books in the early 1970s, he was literally yelled down at it, meetings of the American Medical Association. There's just been a, host a tremendous hostility against carbohydrate reduced diets. And one of the things that I've done as a journalist is I've looked into some of what I, I, I can really only call propaganda against low carb, which are, um, just to give one example, the American College of Cardiology okay, which is largely funded by drug companies and gives advice on cardiovascular disease, they launched a whole press released campaign saying low carb, uh, increase your risk of death, increase mortality, based on nothing more than a slide presentation that was given at their annual conference. <clears throat> no abstract, no paper, no data, nothing peer reviewed. They issued a press release. They did a podcast on it. That was that led to headlines all over the world on how a keto-like diet 
increased mortality. The but, actual paper didn't come out in for another two years or a year and a half later. So this was this was a I think it's fair to say a propaganda campaign mm -hmm. uh, against low carb, which again is just it poses an almost existential threat against their industry. Yep. People and are just reversing type ago, two diabetes. Yeah. Just a few weeks ago there was a, a new study that came out that literally every science alert, every science journal, every science website, every medical nutrition website said, oh, keto will increase your risk of aging prematurely. And so uh, if you just read the highlight, the how the headline, you'd be like, oh God, I, I probably shouldn't do keto. Well, if you read two or three paragraphs in, you find it's a mouse study, even though, and, and it's, it's checking markers that we never check in humans. Humans don't even have some of these markers. This is a mouse study. But as Nina just said, there are over a thousand research studies in human beings about low carbon ketogenic diets. But yet they're going to they're just going to get up on the rooftops and shout about this mouse study and how keto will make you age prematurely. It, that, what else can you call that besides propaganda? I mean, there was, you know, it just happens again and again. I, you know, there's so many of these studies that say keto will again shorten your life increase your increase mortality all of those studies i i reviewed all of them for uh for a peer-reviewed study that came out a couple of years ago and again for another paper i did recently these are peer-reviewed journals all of those studies did misdefined a low carbohydrate diet right so a low carbohydrate diet is tops 25 percent of calories as carbohydrates or 130 grams 100 grams or lower None right. of these studies defined a low carbohydrate diet ac uh, accurately. Exactly. And 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 so you have to and and there are accurate definitions that are public. They're in the scientific literature. They've been in many papers by leading researchers in the field. They've converged upon a definition, and so you have to conclude this is like a willful act of distorting this scientific literature to try to keep low carbohydrate diets out of uh, consideration. 